After going through um, nearly losing my faith, I, I think that God used my mom to protect me and to to bring me back. You know, my mom and apologetics and um, a combination of things, but I think that she was a, a key role in, in that. Welcome to the Mama Bear Apologetics Podcast. A podcast where we teach you to roar like a mother. And by roar, we mean recognize the message, offer discernment, argue for a healthier approach, and reinforce these ideas with your kids. Unless you want to growl around your house. I mean, that's cool, too. <laughs> You're like, check it. We keep it reals. <laughs> that's so bad. You're awesome. Mama Bear Apologetics is a listener-supported program, so if you like what we do, head on over to the Mama Bear Apologetics website and click support. It's time to rise up, ladies. Rise up, Mama Bears. This might not affect your faith, but it might affect your children's. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Mama Bear Apologetics podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you raise kids who think critically, love biblically, and stand firm against the cultural tide. I am joined today with our wonderful ministry partner, Alexa. Alexa, say hi. Hello. And we're just having just a fun time of fellowship in celebration of Mother's Day. Now, we Mother's Day, you know, we're a ministry toward moms. But one thing that we were talking about during our ministry meeting earlier this week is that Mama Bear isn't just for the biological moms. Mama Bear is there for whoever pours into a kid. And sometimes those kids are not your own. They're in your youth group. They're in your college ministry. Um, I met a gal in, in Wheaton who her whole ministry was basically being a mom to all of the new college age girls who were just coming in. And her testimony was so beautiful because, you know, sending your child off to college can be vulnerable. And to know that there is somebody there who's like-minded in the faith, who's bringing up your child when you are not there is such an encouragement. So we just want to thank you. If you are working in children's ministry, if you are in youth ministry, if there is just a younger neighbor gal that you are pouring into, that you are speaking wisdom into, we just thank you. You are a mom and we are so grateful for the ministry that you are leading. I don't know, Alexa, have you ever had anybody that's ever just not been your mom, but just been your mom? I feel like I've had, you know, several experiences through life, but totally, I totally agree with you. And I'm so grateful for all, all the spiritual mamas out there. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. man, they are. They are such a blessing. And in fact, you know, it's it's sometimes those spiritual mamas that end up seeing the fruits of that sort of harvest that we are laying in the faith. Because, it, you know, as anyone knows with kids, sometimes it takes somebody else to say the exact same thing you've been saying for years to really hit, oh, my dear kid. So true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It, it, oh, and we are so grateful to you. So today for our podcast, what we wanted to do is to offer some encouragements to the moms out there, maybe some practical tips, and also share some of our own experiences, uh, Alexa specifically, with her mom and just how her mom's influence and spiritual discipleship within her own life helped her not only through struggling times of the faith, but just nurtured this beautiful legacy of faith. So we're just so excited to join with you today. And so our, our first thing that we want to talk about our first encouragement to moms out there is perhaps something that seems super obvious. It's that moms, you are vital in nurturing the faith of your children. So there is a reason why Paul encourages Timothy and praises Timothy's mother and grandmother is because they were at the forefront. And actually, you can see that Barna did a great study on who kids go to when it comes to questions about the faith. And we'll include those stats below. But when it comes to questions about the faith, if something bothers you and the Bible, they are going to mom first. And in fact, what's amazing is grandmamas, when it comes to the Bible, they are often going to you first over dad with questions about the faith. So I think that's wow. awesome. I, I know I it's know that. Yeah, they, they do. So uh, with the Bible, um, grandma's number two, mom's number one. Wow. And dad, dad is often number three in the mix. So it's so awesome to see how God designed the family yes. and nurturing the faith. 
Because uh, Alexa, I don't know if you noticed this as well, within culture, especially movies and TVs, it's often depicted that the kids don't want the influence of the parents or they're not listening. But that is just not true. Yep. In fact, you actually saw this within your own life. So your mom really poured into you and just nurtured good faith. So can you share just a little bit of, you know, how your mom sort of lovingly parented you? Yes. Um, honestly, it was after I went through a season of doubt. And I nearly lost my faith just like mm. four or five years ago. Um, and listening to other deconstruction stories where people were actually deconverting yeah, um, really helped me to see all of the little seeds my mom planted through my life through childhood. And so that really clarified, you know, the effort that she put into and just the disciplines that she um that she, what's the word that she did <laughs> yeah. um, to, to model for me and to raise uh, me and my sister. Um, and so I think like it, her mindset shifted. She said that she had kind of a revelation from God when we were really little, that we are not just her daughters, um, mm. but we are also her sisters in Christ. And so mm. that kind of gave her uh, a different way of like a mindset shift of yeah they we are also to be respected and it's more less control and more training which is what we're all about here that's probably part of the reason i was so drawn to mama bear apologetics when i first learned about you guys because that's like how i was raised mm. and i found the value in it after going through um nearly losing my faith i i think that god used my mom to protect me and to mm. to bring me back you know my mom and apologetics and um a combination of things but i think that she was a, a key role in in that so now what i love about what you just shared is that this is something that you wrestled with as an adult and your mom was still being that guiding light that discipler even into adulthood which i know some parents that we encounter they think oh my kid's going off to college i've missed the boat on parenting and I mean, we we can just say from Alexa's personal experience ourselves, that is not the case. You know, if if you're still breathing and your kid is still breathing, the Holy Spirit's still working. You just got to start talking. Oh, yeah. There's always time. And yeah. everything is in God's timing. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you haven't learned about apologetics until your children are grown, God knew that ahead of time. Like he's yeah. he's going to use every experience for his purposes. And so... It's great if you can be training your kids and equipping them in apologetics as children. Like that's mm -hmm. that's what we want if we if we can do it. But if you're all if it's if your children are adults, God is working and he he puts you here at this moment for his own reasons. Yeah. And I love how you said that, you know, she nurtured good critical thinking. It wasn't about just saying, here, this is what we believe and this is what you believe. So, you know, just accept it. Let's move on. Cause that's that authoritarian style of, of parenting as well as Christian sort of parenting that can sometimes creep in. And that is, that does not nurture good faith. Instead, right. it was more of this guide and more authoritative, like, okay, look, I'm going to teach you. I'm your parent. But ultimately, it's the Holy Spirit's role to change the heart. So what are some ways, what are some things that she did within your life to help help cultivate this good environment of, you know, you're not just my child, you're my sister in Christ. So let's nurture some good critical thinking. What are some things that she did? Yes. Um, I think this was so key that she was a good listener. So as I was growing up and meeting friends of just different church backgrounds and different stuff, like some were very charismatic, some were like the complete opposite of that. Um, yeah. And I would go on tangents because these are, I'm being introduced to new ideas and new. Mm. And so I just like wholeheartedly buy into something. And then I would go home and I would talk my mom's ear off. Like I just have memories of just like yeah. yapping away on oh, all yeah. these different theological ideas. And I, I, I so admire when I look back that she just listened and she didn't constantly try to like cut me off and correct me, which if I'm being perfectly honest, that's probably what I would have, <laughs> would have done. <laughs> right? I mean, that's my temptation. My kids are so yeah. young, so they're not being like introduced to uh, different, a lot of different ideas yet, um, mm -hmm. unless I'm intentionally introducing them to them. Um so I, I will, I, I still am trying to like give them time to think if they ask me a question about God, like my first response is, um, 
Like, well, what do you think about that? And I try to let them think through an answer before, you know, we start a conversation or I tell them what I think. Um, so I'm trying to uh, follow my mom's example of mm-hmm. allowing my kids to think and mm-hmm. not being so nervous. Like they have to get this correct. Like right, this has, right. like right away, yeah. they have to have it all. And they have to think exactly as I, how I think about it. And um, because I have to respect them that they're also my my brother and my sister in Christ. They're not just my children. So that's what my mom modeled. And I think that it was so important in my season of doubt because there were so many stories of people that never felt like they they were allowed to ask questions or to maybe think through things differently and explore different yeah. um, ideas. And so they were never able to think critically through those ideas because you have to be able to, to chew through things in order to, to think critically. And so because that was just something that I was always allowed to do, um, then I was able to think more clearly. It wasn't like the first time that I was in- engaging new ideas when I was going through that season. Oh, you know what? And I love that too, because it really respects the person's ability to wrestle with big ideas. And it is, I mean, as a parent of, of now we're teenagers. And so we're, we're getting hit with a lot more of the harder stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's things that will occ- occasionally be brought up that they've encountered either in the classroom or by friends. And it's like, oh, you know, you're, you kind of internally panic, which I'm sure you know that feeling of, oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, here's something worldly that's coming in and it sounds good. And my kid's mm-hmm. like, oh man, this actually sounds good. It's okay. We can nurture good critical thinking and we don't want to rush them or make them think that them wrestling with this idea is a problem because it's not. I mean, we are called to wrestle and to test all things and that takes time. Answering questions takes time. So nurturing a good environment of, man, your your questions, your considerations, all of those are are valid. That's good thinking. It's a muscle that needs to be trained. And when we can cultivate that environment, it nurtures more conversations. And I mean, that's yes. what, that's what our homes need. They need to be a spot where whenever anything hits them at the world, they know that boot, when I'm around the dinner table or when I'm sitting on the couch next to mom and dad, I can just unleash with everything I've heard. Yes. And nobody's going to freak out publicly. And right. we, <laughs> internally, and we <laughs> okay. yeah, internally, we're having a bit of a meltdown. Maybe right. after the kids go to bed, you know, there's like, that's it. We're homeschooling. I'm looking yes. into that convent. Um, <laughs> But they know that they can come home and talk because like with your experience, that was a legacy that she laid prior to you leaving the home so that when you're outside of the home, you're struggling, you came back and you were like, mom, you came back to that original mom. I know you've got wisdom and I can just be, I can be real and vulnerable Mm -hmm. and my feelings aren't going to shock you, but we're going to be able to think well. I I love that that was nurtured within your home. Yes. And I think the key to that, to developing that um, discipline is really coming to trust in the Lord. Yes. And so building your own confidence in your faith and trust in Him will help to alleviate because then you really can just like, you can let go. But I know Mm. that takes that's not an easy overnight thing, but it's something that needs to be um, nurtured. Yeah. And it really is a step out in faith of the Lord. Like we have to have humility that it's not us that bring our our children to Jesus. It's the working of the Holy Spirit. And we have to trust in God's timing, too, to where, you know, some of us as parents, we are not going to see our kids come to faith before they leave the house. And we have to have faith enough in God that he is still moving even when we are not in those moments of where we feel like we have control. And that, that is, that's, that's a hard faith step to take as a parent because we know, we know the alternatives. We know what's out there. We know the implications of our faith. And sometimes we want to rush our kids into it. And no, that's not what we're called to do. We're called to basically witness to our children and then missionally journey along with them. Uh, when they have accepted the faith and discipling all the way through. It's it's awesome. And yes. I, I love that you have that. I love that you have that story. Me too. You know, one verse that really speaks to this is Proverbs 31, 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom 
and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. This doesn't mean that she's compromising truth. It means that she has tact, she knows timing, and she is resting in the Lord for guidance. And that's what we encourage all moms to do because you are vital in the nurturing of your child's faith. So be bold in that. Be bold to disciple your children in the Lord. So that's our first encouragement. Be bold in that discipleship. And the second one that we wanted to point out is that you do not have to have it all to have it all. And what we mean by that is, is there is immense societal pressure to adhere to a worldly status. Like you've got to have the big car, you've got, or the fancy car, you got to have the big house, you got to have all these things and your kids need to be, you know, in, involved in every single activity. And it's only when your kids are, I, I joked with Alexa earlier, it's only when your kids are learning Mandarin while playing the violin <laughs> and answering Jeopardy questions that you've achieved <laughs> like parent success. Right. And, and studies actually don't show that. So Barnum did a study on what what are some of the uh, characteristics of what they call vibrant faith within the Christian households. So vibrant faith is uh, has three parts to it. It involves spiritual practices, conversations, spiritual conversations, and hospitality. And what they found is that the vibrant faiths nurtured within the home had these three things. So what this means is that through spiritual practices, conversations, hospitality, families are spending time together. They're playing games. They're going on walks. They're talking to each other. They are teaching the other members of the household about the faith. So this also includes um, family members like grandparents, or maybe you've got a really close friend to where that this isn't, you know, um, Mr. Kelly, this is Uncle Kelly and Aunt Sarah. You know, they're the friends that are actually like the, the surrogate aunt and uncles. Totally. Everybody's got one of those. Yeah. They're involved in the stewardship and discipleship of the kids. They're talking about the faith, forgiveness, and that families are praying together. And I just, I think that's wonderful because Alexa, a lot of your story with your family, it was very, it seems like it was very similar to that. Like mom was really involved. You guys had these great conversations. Can you share into that? Oh, yes. We, we spent a lot of time as a family together. In fact, Mm. um, there's this idea that kids like when they get to a certain age, they just want to be with their friends all the time. Right. My home, like both me and my sister would say, um, if we had a, like a family game night where we were spending mm-hmm. time together, we preferred that over going out with friends. <laughs> like we That's were, awesome. if, if everybody was available, like yeah. we were so excited for like family nights. Um, so my parents did a really good job of fostering just a lot of joy um, mm. and definitely spiritual conversations. And mm. uh, that was very just our normal lifestyle. Yeah. Oh man. And you know, our, our family life now is, is very similar to that. So my husband's family is close by. And when we get together, it's always ridiculously loud. There's always yes. <laughs> jokes and like friendly ribbing, right? You know, everybody's kind of poking fun at the other. We're yeah. playing games. We're laughing. I mean, we're, we're the family in the, if we're in a restaurant and like people are staring, it's, it's one of those situations. But that was one my thing, family growing up. Yes. Yeah, and it and just it's, makes the best memories, and oh, it does. I'm so happy that your family. Oh my gosh, it, <laughs> and it does because yeah, you do. You think back to those game nights and like the silly answers. Um, there's a game I, I think it's like apples to apples. Yeah. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, where you find like the funny. I mean, it's it's wonderful, and you kids look forward to that. Mm-hmm. They they want to spend time within the family with the cousins, and um, it's beautiful because it's it's those moments where maybe you know you're you're not having a deep theological conversation or talking about scripture but it's it's those moments that nurture the others yes. because now because we have these close family bonds you know sometimes kids they are comfortable speaking about something to grandma more so than maybe mom or dad or mm-hmm. and it's it's so important um and one yeah. thing that was fascinating is in this study uh with, on vibrant homes were the things that weren't included so, Alex, the things that weren't included were the, what didn't contribute to a vibrant household was like the overscheduling that so many houses are, are encouraged to have today as seen as like, oh man, you're nailing it. If you're, you know, working and then you've got the uh, PTA and then there's this sporting event and that sporting event or this school activity. So overscheduling and extracurriculars weren't included or weren't seen and maintaining this status quo with society of, oh man, I have to achieve all of these 
kind of materialistic anchors of the big house, the the two or three cars, you know, the fancy vacations, everybody's got a giant room to themselves. Those mm -hmm. things actually weren't part of that that vibrant household. Oh, yeah. I, I think those um, really can become more of a burden. Yeah. Trying to keep up and especially the over scheduling. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And there's so much pressure to do it. There so is. it's it's like you feel like you're you're not if you're not giving your kids the chance to try out every single sport that's available yep. or every single um, form of art, singing, mm -hmm. piano, you know, dance. Uh, if they haven't tried it all, then you don't you might be missing like their gift and their talent. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just like there's just so much pressure. And mm -hmm. I'm so happy that that study <laughs> that's so such a relief that that that's not required for, um, you know, faithful home. Yeah. Oh, I know. Me, me as well. And, you know, and it's funny because I, I think back to even our homeschooling days is there, there's even this pressure, even within like homeschool communities of, you know, oh, we, we have to make sure that we're involved in uh, all these different co-ops and all these different like uh, sports and, and leagues and everything to where we now, we see so many Christian families who are are missing out on church just to go and pursue after a, uh, a sports yes. league. And it's like, that's what's most important. That's what's developing there as kids. But it's, you know, it, it's not the sport that's doing that. It, it's faith in Christ. And so that importance of modeling that, no, we're, we're going to prioritize uh, what God says and his, his design, meaning the family, over what society makes us feel like we have to do as parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. If anybody needs permission to be a minimalist and not just right. stuff, but just in your schedule, that's, that's okay. <laughs> like yes. it is okay to not be constantly overwhelmed. Exactly. All the time. No, and, <laughs> you know, one thing that was funny, Alexa, was when, when COVID really kicked off, there was a, an article that was written talking about how many moms exited the workforce. And the article was phrased like, oh my gosh, this is, this is tragic. Society's going to suffer because wow. of it. But what was revealed in the article were the COVID shutdowns forced moms to be at home. And for many of them, they realized, wait a second, you know, culture has said that, you know, I can have it all. I can, I can work full time. I can do all the things. And some moms are called to that. And that's great. Mm -hmm. And that's a blessing. You can be a Christian mom in the workforce, but so many of them also realized, wait a second, I have been burning the candle at both ends. Yeah. And what, what that did, that shutdown did is realize actually, you know, I want to be at home and pouring into the family. And so it, it's fascinating how it took society shutting down for people to realize, oh, wait a second, you know what? It's okay to be the stay at home mom, to focus in and, and refocus on the family. And that's what it required so many to do is to stop, cut themselves off from all this overscheduling and yeah. realize, you know, what's most important is that family time cuz you know yes. as the as the saying goes we only have 18 summers with our kids and oh. um yeah though especially in our family those are those are quickly uh f they're fleeting and mm -hmm. so we want we want to make the most of that yes absolutely now what this requires though is some grace uh because as moms uh, Alexa and I can totally empathize is we are super hard on ourselves. We often set really high standards that we there's no way for us to meet. And Satan loves to just sneak in and say, Oh wow, you didn't you didn't do this with your kid. You're missing out on this and make us feel so guilty to where it kind of steals our joy in parenting. I mean, have there been moments oh, where yeah. you felt like that, Alexa? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I struggle with that. So yes, yeah. very, very much so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want to encourage you to that don't allow Satan to steal your joy within this moment. Like mm -hmm. sacrifice the things that are are not of eternal importance and be willing by God's leading, you know, to pour back into the family. I mean, that's why our culture is attacking the family so much because Satan knows that the family is vital in pointing children to Christ. So if it can get the family busy, I believe it's a quote by Corey Ten Boom, to where if he can't get you, if Satan can't get you to sin, he's going to make you busy. And you know what? Don't allow Satan Dang. to make you too mm -hmm. busy to pour into the people that you have just been blessed with. And that's your family and your church family as well. So lastly, our final encouragement for you is the encouragement that your church is there for you. So I don't know, Alexa, you ever, you ever felt lonely as a mom doing the mom thing? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I Yes, I have felt lonely. And especially like if we're talking about having a church family, being yeah. in between church families Oof, and trying yes. to figure out 
after moving and trying to figure out where to go. Um, yes, it can get very lonely. Well, and I think too, it's, there's kind of this pressure to, to have it all under control. Like I, I know I've seen the the social media posts where people are like, oh, I've done, you know, I, I've done homeschooling for this and I gardened my 18 acre farm and then I cooked eight loaves of sourdough bread all while, you know, birthing a baby. And it's like all yep. these things. And I'm like, man, if I, if I can't do it by myself, then I'm failing. So I'm not going to seek out help because that means I'm dropping the ball. Yes. Yeah. You feel ashamed. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. and that's such a lie because we're meant for community and so much within scripture, we're encouraged to lean on one another. And oh my gosh, as a mom to have someone who's further down the mom journey than you be like, you know what? It's okay. You got Mm -hmm. this. Oh, that is just nothing is sweeter than those words, especially Mm -hmm. when you're, you know, your toddler's having a meltdown and you look like you've slept in the same clothes for five days as you have. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's awesome. And unfortunately, culture often says that, you know, motherhood is lonely. And we can kind of put this pressure on ourselves like, no, motherhood is lonely and be isolating. But no, we are, we're called the community. Yes. So one thing that we're encouraged is through church membership. And, you know, sometimes you may have to go to another church to find a, a really good mom's group. They have, uh, most churches do have mom's ministries and they're a huge blessing because you get about an hour and a half break from your kiddos. More than likely, there's snacks included, and you could have conversations with other adults that doesn't revolve around Dora, which is awesome. Sorry, I gave a thumbs up there for all who are listening. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so one thing, there's three characteristics of a church that is pouring into their moms. And the first one is mothers feel respected. So Alexa, mm-hmm. have there ever been a time where your church, where you've just felt you know, respected, loved, appreciated? Yeah, um, actually, it was at it was a women's Bible study that they actually had child care for. And it was just like you said, like you can yeah. come in, there were snacks. <laughs> um, but that just made you feel like um, that they cared about, you know, us moms. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, your church community, they are, they're building you up, right? When, when they are encouraging moms and they're showing and expressing how important it is to be a mom and then providing opportunities for moms, not only to be built up together, but also giving practical tips on how to do the whole mom thing. So respected is one of them. Being equipped is another, which, you know, Alexa and I, we are, we're so thankful that we get to be a part of this ministry where we're not only equipping each other, but we're also equipping other moms. And you get to see that in your growing up years of your mom equipping you. Now, was she ever poured into, did she ever share, share like her faith background or maybe church or anything like that? Yeah, she came to the faith um, when she was newly married. So in her early 20s, um, and it was an older woman Mm -hmm. and her husband that kind of took her under her wing and taught her the faith. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a robust intellectual faith. Mm -hmm. My mom is just a natural um, researcher and and Mm -hmm. studier. So I, I have memories of her just she it's like my if I think of my mom in childhood, I think of her at night. The lamps are on. She's sitting in bed and she has her Bible out and her bed is covered with books and a notebook. (laughs) And she just, she was, you know, pouring over these books and taking notes. And it was like that, that's something that I remember. And it didn't really, I didn't catch on to like that love of Mm -hmm. learning. I I don't think until I was a little bit older, but that was a seed that was planted because she modeled that for me. And it showed me that I don't know that I was consciously aware of this until I was older, but that yeah. th- her faith was reasonable. And mm-hmm. this was a lot of the reason was because she was being poured into by the mm-hmm. people that, that introduced her to Christ in the first place. And so they, she maintained those friendships. Um, they um, just a couple of years ago, uh, both the husband and the wife passed away, mm-hmm. uh, but they maintained a, a wonderful relationship all those years. Oh my gosh, that's that's so awesome because they poured into your mom, your mom poured into you, you're pouring into your kids. I mean, it's just, it's incredible the way that, that God works. Yes. I know. And the fact that, you know, she was not, um, um, the who poured into your mother. She was not a member of of the biological family. Again, that's church family. It just really reinforces yes. the importance of community. And mm-hmm. I love that, that it really is beautiful. Yeah. 
So yes, moms, uh, churches, you know, if you're a church member there, what moms definitely need is respect. Uh, you know, the value of what they're doing is, is celebrated and seen. Um, they need equipping, which means, I mean, moms, we are called to love God with our minds too, not just in chasing littles and, and, uh, and changing diapers. Those are all vital and necessary, but we also need to be encouraged and equipped intellectually as well, because we're the ones that are often getting those first questions about the faith. You know, why, why did God do this? Or, you know, what happens if I have a friend who's an unbeliever? I mean, mom's the one they're going to first. And so if you can nurture your moms and equip your moms, that's a huge blessing because you're, you're changing families and you're changing culture in the process. Yeah, absolutely. Respect, equipped, and last one is accepted. So this one can, can kind of come with a lot of weight. Um, the life situations vary. And sometimes if there is a single mom or maybe a, a woman who is now facing an unplanned pregnancy, sometimes some of the last places where she feels accepted is the church. Mm. And that's the, the most important place for her to be, the where she should feel, feel welcome and where they should be conducting outreach. And so also what our moms are needing and what we should be looking for within ministries is accepted. So this doesn't mean necessarily that they are just, you know, fully accepting of a sin situation and not speaking life into that, but that you are welcome at the church and we're here to iron sharpens iron and build each other up. And yes. so that's what, that's what our moms are, are needed for. They needed to be provided and supported and included within the church family. And what's beautiful is, as, you know, through Alexa's story, we see that when moms are encouraged and poured into, then we see families changing for the better. So Alexa, we, we, um, you know, we each have kids and everything. So what are, what are some things that you have found that really work well with your kids? I try, I get very overwhelmed very easily. And mm. so I'm not like the most disciplined person in the world. So I try to pair moments together. Mm -hmm. So like, um, before we do homeschool, we have a new a routine that the kids will remind me of if I forget that we're going to get the Bible and we're going to read mm -hmm. a story and we're going to talk about it. And then we do our our school uh, yeah. and I try to make that a priority. Like this is the first most even if we have a ton of work to do. Right. Yeah. Um, and I try to pair as soon as we get in the car and we're driving out of the neighborhood. This is when mm -hmm. we pray together and we thank God and we think try to think of things to pray for. Um, so stuff like that. I try to make it simple, yeah. but regular. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and then through that, the kids just will randomly pop up questions and we'll have deep theological conversations just randomly. Yes. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm trying to do now. My kids are still, they're eight and nine. So mm -hmm. we'll see as they grow up. I'm so nervous. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I'm praying though. That's another thing, um, though, that I am praying that, that as they grow older, that the Lord will, uh, help me to really trust him and allow mm. them to, and not try to control them, like to yeah. be there, to be a guide, to uh, teach and train, but not yeah. try to control. And yeah. so I, that's something I'm struggle with a little bit of wanting to like, to do that. So. Oh, and you know what though, as someone who's been there and been through that, I can say, you know, there's going to be times where you do that really well. And there's probably going to be times where, you know, uh, you mess up. Um, just mm -hmm. speaking from personal experience and it happens. And that's where, you know, that grace for ourselves. It's like, okay, we can always come back and be like, you know, buddy or sweetheart. You know, I, I was kind of just pushy on this and I apologize. Let's, you know, I'm here to discuss and analyze. And I know, um, with, there was an incident where, my son and his friend were att attending a youth group and it was a church down the street. And when we had picked them up and were coming home, they were talking about, oh yeah, this was a, a really unique experience. And um, they were actually coaching us on how to speak in tongues. And I was like, Oh, and you know, I looked at my husband and I had the whole like, Oh my gosh, we need to shut this down. We need to analyze this. Like I was, I was behind the wheel too. And I'm like, do not go off into a ditch. Like I was about ready to go like full mode. And my husband, he just did this, this little sort of like tapping down move. He's like, it's okay. And he started asking nice. the questions and everything. Okay. So all the things that like, I wanted to jump and be like, wait, no, you know, yes. um, I, I, it was just such a, such a great moment to see him be all the things that I definitely was not at that moment. <laughs> yes. 
So perfectly complimentary right there. Oh my gosh. And I mean, it's, it's going to happen as moms, you know, you're going to have moments where you're just like, yes, this is awesome. And, you know, give all glory to God in those moments because it truly is him. And then there's moments where we're like, oh, you know, you think back two years to some random conversation. You're like, man, totally dropped the parenting ball there. Oh yeah. But, um, one thing that's worked with our family because you have to adjust. Every kid is different. And and so what works for one kid is not going to work for another. Mm. And so what I've found within our home, so I've got 16, 14, 12, and now almost seven months. And so for for my middle one, he is my engineering type, very introverted, quiet. He likes to build things. But what we found that works with him are, is going for a walk. Because what walk, walking is therapeutic. It actually helps you process thoughts better. That's why, you know, it, it was kind of a, a funny thing in cartoons where if somebody was thinking well, I think of like DuckTales, Scrooge McDuck, he would pace back and forth. Or like when you see people thinking they're kind of pacing, that's actually yeah. a way to help somebody think well. So with him, huh. uh, I, ju- I just started going for walks with him and just, hey, buddy, how was your day? What, what did you, you know, what are, what's your friends going with or what have you heard lately? And for whatever reason, you know, this kid will give three or two word answers at home. But when we're on a walk, he'll be talking for the entire mile and a half, two miles that we're out there just because, you know, we're, we're side to side. He doesn't have to look directly at me, but he just, it's, it's a way to help him just completely share what he's going to through. We can discuss, oh, you know, hypothetically, if someone, uh, you know, said this or a challenge of the faith, you know, what are, what are your thoughts about that? And then he'll share. And it's, it's so great. So it's one of those. That's a great tip. I love that. And it's fun. You know, you get exercise so you can justify the terrible eating that you've done during the day, or at least I do. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, we're on the spot. The kids would not be as open to having discussions when we're walking. They are. So it's, um, it's, it's one of those fun things as a mom where we have the opportunity to be able to, to kind of figure out our kids and yeah. use those little moments towards spiritual growth. So moms, we're going to wrap up. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. However of a mom you are, whether it's with your neighbor children, with your nieces, your nephews, your grandchildren, with the youth group, um, with the children's ministry, or the kids in your classroom, however you are a mom, we thank you. You're a blessing. We want to encourage you. Don't be daunted by what's going on in the world. Instead, be encouraged to speak life because yes, the battle rages, but God has already overcome the world. So we are just called to be a faithful witness in the midst of it. So be emboldened. You know, you are vital in the nurturing of your child. So speak life. Your church is there for you and you don't have to compete with worldly standards to be able to lay down this legacy of faith. So just speak up pour into your kids and just we are we're grateful to be able as a ministry to come alongside you and help you do that now alexa i'm going to totally put you on the spot here do you want to pray us out oh sure heavenly father we lift these mama bears up to you lord i'm so so grateful um to be able to be a part of this as i get to be a part of the ministry i also am so poured into myself and i even learned some things today <laughs> during this conversation i'm so grateful lord i pray that you would um that you would be with be with the mama bears lord that you encourage them that you would help help them to remember that we really are just doing playing our small part but the whole thing is in your hands and all we have to do is walk faithfully to you and you'll take care of the rest and our children are in your hands and i'm so grateful for your goodness i'm so grateful for your truth and i just pray that you would really really bless our moms this mother's day and every day in jesus name we pray amen amen well thank you mama and papa bears for joining us for this mother's day podcast we'll see you next time 